It's fair to say that if you just found this video, you've probably got a Dreamcast that isn't reading games the way that it used to. And maybe you were told that your only option was to go out and buy an expensive digital upgrade for the optical drive. And honestly, that would probably work. But maybe you have a reason for not doing that. Maybe you want to just keep your Dreamcast in its original condition and just enjoy your existing library of disc-based games and just get the thing working again. So whatever your reason is, if you want to upgrade your Dreamcast and put a, a working laser back into it, you're in the right place. So in this video, we're going to talk about upgrading your Dreamcast laser with a laser from a PC CD-ROM drive, and we'll go through the whole thing step by step. Um, to get started, I'm not going to show you how to disassemble the Dreamcast. There's a lot of videos and other content out there that will show you how to do that. So assuming that you got your Dreamcast open, the first thing you want to do is take a look inside the lid. Take a look at your GD-ROM drive. Sega used a few different models over the years, and you'll need one made by Samsung to complete this tutorial. You can see that mine says Samsung right on the outside of the casing. You'll notice that there are three screws that hold the GD-ROM drive into the rest of the console. Go ahead and remove those. You'll just need a Phillips screwdriver. Take out your GD-ROM drive and flip it over. You'll notice that there are five screws that hold the whole thing together. The top two screws are hidden by a piece of foam. I used a small knife to cut slits in the foam to expose those screws. And then you should be able to remove all five of the screws with a Phillips screwdriver. Once you've done that, you can lift the casing pieces apart, and inside you'll find a little computer board. There are no more screws. You should be able to start to lift that board out. Um, the board itself does have a ribbon cable that connects the GD-ROM to the computer board. Go ahead and disconnect it from the back of the GD-ROM drive, but leave it attached to the board. There are also two wires that come out of the GD-ROM and go into the computer board. You can remove those from the computer board as well, and then you should be able to separate all the pieces. This is what it looks like when all the pieces are separated. You can go ahead and put the casing and the computer board aside, and we're going to focus on the laser itself. On the bottom side of the GD-ROM enclosure, you'll see a little plastic white clamp that's holding all the gears in place. There's just a tiny Phillips screw on top of this clamp. Undo that, and then you should be able to lift the clamp right out of the enclosure. With the clamp out of the way, you'll have easy access to all of the gears. At this point, there's really nothing holding everything together. Go ahead and grip the bottom of the swirled rail that you see pictured right there. Um, grab the side that's in the little box, and you should be able to just lift the whole rail and the laser itself out of the enclosure. This is what it looks like once you've removed the laser and the rail. At this point, you can twist the rail counterclockwise and fully remove it from the laser. Now that you've got your laser out of your GD-ROM, it's time to talk about where you're getting your new laser. It can actually be from any CD-ROM drive. The best ones are from the early 2000s, so like 2000 to 2003 or so. And you can find them online on eBay, you can find them at some thrift stores, it doesn't really matter where you get it as long as it works. This does have to be an actual CD-ROM and not a CD-ROM reader like CDRW or a DVD-ROM or a Blu-ray ROM. Those don't work. It has to be an original CD-ROM only, so no writer capability at all. Um, the reason for this is that the ribbon cable connection that comes out of your Dreamcast is pinned out in a certain way, and that matches old original CD-ROM lasers. If you try to use a DVD drive, for example, the pins are different and it won't work. So it has to be an original, and I'll put a list of some drives that are known to work in the description below. For this tutorial, I'm using a Samsung Model SC-152. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to get the laser out of your CD-ROM, because it really varies based on the CD-ROM model that you purchase. Um, in my case, I was a little bit destructive, because keep in mind, we're not trying to keep the CD-ROM working after things are done. We only want the laser out of it. So you can extract that in any way that makes sense to you. Um, it's going to be similar to what we just did with the GD-ROM drive, and you can always ask questions if you need more help. Here's a quick comparison of your original GD-ROM laser and the PC laser that we just pulled out of that CD-ROM drive. You'll notice that on the GD-ROM laser, there's a little white plastic piece that's held in place with two screws. This is actually a guide, so remember that swirled little rail that we pulled out of the GD-ROM drive? This plastic piece has two little teeth that ride that rail, and that's what guides the laser up and down as it moves around. It's really important to pay attention to the little teeth that are in that white piece. 
So take your original laser, turn it to the side, and notice how that all sits together. If your replacement laser is a little too thick where you mount this white plastic piece, then those teeth will not make proper contact with the rail and your laser will not move up and down as it should. If the mounting slot on yours is a little thicker like mine was, you may need to use a Dremel or, or some sort of rotary tool to wear down the area that I've pictured on the screen right now. This will lower things down so that your laser fits properly and the white piece makes proper contact with the rail. This is what it looks like when you attach the white plastic piece to the new laser. Now you're ready to reinsert your rail. Just rotate it clockwise. Make sure that those white teeth are making proper contact with the grooves in the rail and we're ready to put it back into the console. Install your CD-ROM laser back into the GD-ROM enclosure. Go ahead and put the clamp back on and screw it down and then check and see if anything is out of whack. So make sure the gears are connected and turning. Make sure you can move your laser up and down the rails. Um, you'll notice on the screen that I highlighted two areas. When I was testing my laser, I found that those areas stuck out a little bit more than the original laser did, and it prevents the new laser from going all the way to the back of the slot. And this would prevent it from reading certain games. So you may need to take out your rotary tool again and trim those areas that I highlighted back just a bit so that it goes all the way back to the back of the rail just like the original GD-ROM laser used to. We're almost ready to put everything back together. Our last step is to reconnect the ribbon cable from your GD-ROM board into the new laser. You need to do this very carefully. The ribbon cable that comes from the GD-ROM board only has 16 pins. The spot where you plug in the cable on your new laser has 17 pins. And that's not a big deal. All you need to do is plug in the ribbon cable as far to the right as you can, just like the screen shows, leaving the leftmost pin empty. As long as you do this, everything should work perfectly. And that's essentially our last step, our last modification. Now you can reassemble your GD-ROM drive, so reconnect your wires, get everything back inside the enclosure, and put it back in your console just in the same way that you took it out. So just do the reverse steps. And at this point, you should be able to test everything and see if games work. If games do work, then you're good to go. No further adjustments should be needed. If you notice that maybe CDs work, but original GD-ROMs don't work, or that nothing works, you may need to adjust the pot screw that you see on the screen right now, right above the ribbon cable. You want to make very small adjustments if you need to do any at all. So test it first, make little turns to the right if your games don't read right away. And outside of that, that's it. You should have a working Dreamcast and everything should be where it needs to be. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. This is kind of an impromptu video. It's not very flashy but hopefully it gets the point across. There is a written guide that you'll see linked in the comments below where you can go and look at this on the screen if you'd rather not watch it in a video. I hope you guys have a good one, and we'll see you next time.